Hey, Henning from Flip Normals here, and in today's tutorial, we are going to be covering how to extract a vector displacement map from ZBrush and how to apply that to our scene in Maya using Arnold. A vector displacement map is a different kind of displacement map. You can see up here you have just normal disps and we have vector disps. Vector displacement maps generally perform better results. With a normal displacement map, it can only go up and down, but with a vector displacement map, it can also go to the side. So this can generate shapes that normal displacement maps simply can't do. So for instance, if you have a horn that does not just go straight up and down, there's a little bit of a curve to it like so, this is going to be more accurate for sure. In general, of course, I rec highly recommend that your topology supports all the shapes, so this doesn't really happen. But, you know, this kind of stuff can happen. In general, vector displacement maps are just more accurate. The con of vector displacement maps is that they are software specific. So this video here, for instance, is not going to work for V-Ray or Blender or any other render engine. This is specific to Arnold for Maya. It might work with other Arnold versions and other software, but it's specific to Arnold. And since it's using all the channels, red, green, and blue, it's also not easy to use this directly in texturing. For instance, often you would take the displace map and you would put it into Painter and you use that as a mask for different things. You can't really do that here. So in that case, you, was, you would have to still just extract a regular displace map. Also, the setup is a little bit more complicated and you have to know a few values. But honestly, once you know the setup, it's, it's very straightforward. It's not harder to set up once you know how to use it. So I highly recommend sticking with vector displace maps. Also, if you prefer this tutorial here as a written tutorial, we have this on blog.flipnormals.com and this covers every single step in writing, which of course is very handy if you want to revisit this in the future. And before we get into the video, be sure to check out flipnormals.com, our curated marketplace for amazing tutorials and really high quality assets. Like for instance, this eye kit here that allows you to simply drag and drop the eyes into any character and it's going to look absolutely gorgeous right away. We're very proud of this kit and we use it for our own characters as well. So back to ZBrush, before we extract a vector displacement map and get into the settings, you just have to be sure that your model has two things. The first being that it has subdivision levels. In this case, we have six subdivision levels and that your model also has UVs. It needs subdivision levels because in ZBrush, the way that you extract displacement maps is the difference between one level and the other. So for instance, if you go between one and six, that would have a lot of details. And if you go between like three and six, that would only be the difference between these two. And your model also needs UVs because the vector displacement maps are texture maps and they need to go into, well, a texture map. So once you have that, then you just have to be sure that all layers have been deleted. In this case, we don't have any layers. We can also just delete any morph targets and such just to be on the safe side. If you do have layers, just go to a highest subdivision level and either delete it or just hit bake. And then we go to a new place you might not have been before, which is under preferences. And let's just dock this over. And then we have to go to import and export. And here you see two settings. There's no reason why you would have been messing around with this before if you haven't done vector displacement maps. For Arnold, you have to change the first one to 47 and the second one to 25. If you choose different numbers for these ones, it's not going to work. And this is the specific part of this tutorial, which means that you get a different map which is not going to work in other software. If you're using another software and you're following this one, you will have to figure out what these numbers are for your specific render engine. So once you've set this to 47 and 25, again, for Arnold for Maya, then you go over to C plugin, which you can find over here and just dock this over here. Then we have vector displacement map and there aren't really that many settings we have to be concerned with. The first one is, do you want subtools or not? In this case, we don't really have subtools, so that doesn't really matter. Then if you do have subtools, merge maps is fantastic because this means if you have models that are in separate subtools, but they're sharing a UDIM, then they are going to be merged into one. This doesn't work with EXRs, just as a heads up, so you have to export this out as a TIFF, and we can just disable this. Then map size, pretty obvious what that is. In general, I prefer to keep this as high as possible. And, but in this case, we're just gonna set this to 2K. Map border, this is how much of a bleed is there at around the border. You generally want to set this to as high as possible. Flip V, be sure this is definitely enabled because ZBrush is weird and all maps need to be flipped vertically. You re-UV, you can do this as well. This is just going to smooth the UVs and export options. Then we go to file names. This has to be set to UDIM under the UV tile here if you have UDIMs. My model here has a few UDIMs. I think that's four UDIMs. So this has to be set to UDIMs. Otherwise it's not going to work because the other conventions here are like 
old school legacy conventions which might work with Mudbox. So set this unit. Then we go to vector displays map. And then you just be sure that all these settings here are enabled. And then which subdivision level should you be going from? If you are exporting the subdivision level one, the mesh from this level, then you need to set this to one. If you are exporting from level two, you need to set this to two. Pretty self-explanatory in that regard. You just have to be sure that these are exactly the same when you are exporting your map and exporting your mesh. So that's it for exporting out the maps. Now, once you are ready with this and you are sure that you don't have any layers or anything like that, you just go to Cradle Maps. Then you hit Save in the correct location. And this is going to take probably a few minutes. So here we are. Now we just have to export out our mesh as well. We go from Tool and then Export. And then we are just going to be exporting this out. And now in Maya, we just have to import our mesh to what we just export out now. Just drag and drop this in. And here we go. We have our nice little mesh. And you can also see that we have the three maps here as well. You can also rename these ones as well. We are not going to do that now. But uh, you can see that the convention here is quite messy. So you probably do have to name them. The convention I will be using would be VDisp underscore and then the UDIMP number. In Maya, there are two steps we have to take to make our vector displays maps work. The first one is we have to apply the vector displays map to our mesh itself. The second one is that we have to set the model to be smooth at render time. So we are going to be starting off with just setting up the um, vector displays map itself. Also, we're just going to go into a camera. I've already set this up. So this has a bit of a light to it and uh, such. So this is a nice little scene Now we are going to be creating a new material, we, do, we are just going to be using the standard surface and we can just call this care mat and that's okay. And then we are going to bring up the hyper shade. So we have the hyper shade here and we are going to go under the standard surface shader group. This is just a shader group that every material has under displacement mat. We are going to click on this one, then we're going to hit file. And this is going to set up a displacement shader for us. Now this is almost correct. This is set up to be using a standard displacement. We want a vector displacement map. So we just go under displacement, then we change the image name and we find the file we have. And here you can see that this is weird, right? Compared to normal displacement map, this has red, green and blue. And this is because it's using all those channels to get a lot of extra data. Open this up and just change the color space to raw. This is under utility here and raw and then change UV tiling mode to Mari. And now you can see this finds this beautifully. And then we have to go under the hypershade here and just change the out color to vector displacement map. And we can just delete the other connection. And then under displacement shader itself, we set the vector space to tangent. And if we try to render now, you're going to see that the displacement map is actually applying correctly, but it's, it's faceted, which means that it's pushing and pulling the polygons in and out as it should, but it's very low res. And that's because we've only done step one out of two. We've only applied the displacement map with the correct settings. In order for this to actually show up properly, we have to obviously give this a lot more resolution. So that's step two. And we can do this very easily by selecting a model and then we have our attribute editor and go here under the attribute editor. The first node here is always a transform node. This means that this is where is the shape in space. And the second one is a shape node. This describes how the shape is actually being rendered. And under here we have Arnold. Then under Arnold, we have a little tab called subdivision and we set the type to cat Clark. This means that it's going to be using cat Clark, which is a pretty standard algorithm for subdivisions. And then we can just change this to the same amount of subdivisions that we had in CBrush in an ideal world, but in a practical world where we have limited computation space or computation times, then we can just set this to, you know, we can try out what works here. Something like three or four is probably going to be fine. And then under displacement attributes, we can enable auto bump, which is going to put the extra info that we we aren't actually putting into the model itself we just put this into the bump and that's really it this is the only thing you have to change for now so now we are just going to be doing another render and now you should see that this here is going to be nice and smooth and you can see here because of my lazy sculpting i still have brush strokes in this model and you can see that this works beautifully right now so this is how we set up a vector displacement map in zbrush but I don't trust displacement maps. I'm paranoid like crazy about displacement maps because there are there's so many things that can go wrong with it. So to be sure that this is actually working, what we are going to be doing, we are just going to be storing this render and then we are going to be exporting out a decimated version of this model so that we can compare this 
to the render because otherwise we we don't really know what this looks like because this looks different than what we had in Seaworth but of course it looks different because we have a different focal length we have different lights we have a different um, material on it so of course it's going to look different so it can be very hard to see if it works or not because one of the issues with displaced maps is that you often lose a lot of your uh, details going from Seabrush to Maya. So we just want to be sure that we haven't lost any of that. So let's jump into Seabrush and again we just have to be sure that we don't have any layers or anything like that and that you also saved your model before because I'm going to decimate this guy. Now we don't have to bring in the whole, in this case this is going to be like the 29 million poly version because that's going to be pretty insane even in terms of like making the um, decimated version because it's just going to be way too heavy. So we are instead going to just go one subdivision level down, just shift D, and now it is going to be seven. Then I'm just going to be deleting higher and deleting lower. And then we are going to be going on over to C plugin as well. Again, it's from here. And then we go under the summation master right here. You can also just hit the shift key. This is a little cool tip to open up multiple as well. Just a little bonus tip for you. And then here we can set the um, custom points here. Just set this to like a thousand here. You could of course just do another decimation here, but this is going to give us a million polygons, which is going to be fine. And then we just hit custom. We don't need UVs or anything for this because this is purely a decimated model. So we don't want any issue. We don't want anything else with this. We don't want to apply the texture map. We just want to test that this is going to work. And there we go. This took around three minutes or so. And this is now at almost a million. Also, it's a little tip as well. Just delete your caches once in a while because this is going to fill up real fast once you start to do a lot of decimation. Then we go to tool, export, same thing as before. Then we go to tool and export. And now in Maya, we are just going to be dragging in this model here. This is a little tip as well. You can just drag from the Windows Explorer, keeping this nice and simple. And here we have our decimated version on top. Then we are just going to be assigning the same material that we just did. This is the character mat. We just want to be sure that we kill the displacement map on this because that's going to not really work because that's going to apply displacement map twice. We don't have UVs, but just to be sure. So we are just going to be hiding the original one here. And then we are just got to make sure that this one here is here. These are not actually going to look exactly the same, but this one here is going to look a little bit better actually because of the... Uh, decimation we're going to be losing a little bit in it but that's you know that's a good thing that shows that this is this is accurate so then we can just hit start and this is going to look very similar now to what we had before but yeah you are going to be seeing some issues in it like some of the creases are not going to be as dark but in general this should look one to one so cool now it's done rendering let's do a uh, comparison between these two and let's just go between these two so you can see there is a tiny bit of difference here. This is in the roughness that you're seeing here, meaning that it looks like one is more broken up than the other. This is purely a decimation issue because here it's more accurate. This is the first one, which has all the nice pores sculpted. And since I'm doing the pores on this guy here in the shape itself, this is going to just cause issues. So this is working. If this wasn't working, you would see very, very different results. You can see some issues here, but again, this is just a decimation. To verify this, that this is indeed just the um, decimation. We can just go and go into Seabrush, and then we can start to start to see some of these areas here. That this here is just going to be a little bit more broken up. You can see here that this here is just quite decimated. Where if we undo this, you can see that this is uh, looking a little bit softer and such. So this is how we set up a vector displacement map from Seabrush to Arnold. So yeah, that's it. I hope this was helpful for you. Keep in mind that um, we also have this tutorial here as a written article and that we have tons of amazing products on flipnormals.com. So see you guys in the next one.